All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go in our player script and in our player We're gonna add some things. So we're just gonna we're gonna write a variable here It's gonna be second. It's gonna be our HP value right here Next thing we want to do is we want to set up the puppet HP We just need to make sure that we're on track and all the clients have the right HP value now We're gonna we're gonna minimize this. And we're gonna add a new timer We're just gonna add a child node. just add a timer. We're gonna rename this timer to hit timer I'm just gonna set the wait time to 0 0.1 turn on one shot and then we want to, as usual, connect the timeout signal back to the player. And now that we have this connected, we want to go back up here, make a new variable. We're just going to do our hit timer. We're just going to get our hit timer, you know, just so we have references. I'm going to scroll back down again. We're just going to define our setter getter right here for set HP. And we're just going to set HP to new value. And if we're the network master, we're going to make sure we send out and update our puppet HP value. So if you're the network master, you basically want to tell the other clients what your HP value is. Next setter we're going to define is the puppet HP set. And we're just going to update puppet HP with the new value. So if we are not the network master, then we want to set our HP to puppet HP. If our puppet HP gets changed, let's say our HP value on our player gets changed, right? On our client, it sends out that HP value to all the other clients. And the, all, all the other clients change this puppet HP and they're like, hey, this puppet HP value has just changed and we want to use that for our HP. So we're just going to set HP to puppet HP. It's just a way of making sure we're all on track. Now going back to our player, we're going to add a new node. It's going to be an area 2D. We're going to rename this to hitbox. I just like to call it that. It just makes everything easier. I'm just going to duplicate this collision shape we're already using. Throw that in as the hitbox shape and just rename it back to collision shape 2D. And now we have an area 2D to check if bullets hit us. So just connect the area entered signal back to the player. And we need to make sure that this bullet is a bullet right because we're gonna have other area 2ds that you might have in your game and so we want to make sure this is the right one so we're gonna add a group remember select the hit box add a group to the bullet and just call it player damager any area 2d that has this name at player damager will be able to damage the players when our hit box area is entered we want to actually before we check the area make sure that we are the server all right and the next thing we want to do is if we are the server then we want to check if the area is in the player damager group meaning that it can hurt the player. And we just want to get the parent of the area. We want to make sure that this player damager, the owner of this damager, is not equal to ourself. So we won't be able to shoot ourselves, right? Because if the bullet flies in some weird direction and it collides with yourself, you do not want to be able to hurt yourself with your own bullet. So we essentially define player owner when we shoot the bullet to our get tree unique ID. So that's what we're going to be checking if it's not equal to that, meaning that we didn't shoot the bullet. Then we're going to do a remote procedure call hit by damager we're gonna be passing in with this call the damage of this bullet we want to receive the amount of damage that this bullet has because what if you have multiple guns well you want to be able to change the damage in this uh bullet so we're just going to be getting that damage value and passing it through by hit by damager and then we're going to tell the bullet to destroy itself so rather than just saying q free on the bullet we want to do area dot get parents rpc destroy this is only on the server end we just destroy the bullet we only destroyed the bullet on the server. You have to think in terms of all the clients and everyone connected. So if we destroy the bullet only on the server, we're going to get in a whole ton of invalid packet errors because the scene tree does not match. So we need to make sure that we tell all the other clients that this bullet has been destroyed. Now we haven't defined this hit by damager function. So let's actually, let's define that here. All right. So this is a sync function. So remember when it's a sync function, it gets executed on our end and all the clients end. If it's just a remote, it will only be executed on the client unless we tell it that we want to execute it on our, our end. Then we'll just subtract damage to, from our HP value. This is a little bit of a cheat, but we're going to make our character flash white by setting modulate color 555, which is beyond the one value because it goes from zero to one in the RGB value. So if we go and turn it all the way up to five, it'll make the player white. This won't, if you have if you have lighting in your game, you do not want to use the solution. Just use uh, another texture or use a shader for this. But for now, we're just going to use this modulate. And then we're going to tell our our hit timer to start because remember we defined a timer here and we just want to say hey we want to start this timer which goes for 0.1 seconds and then we'll set our modulate color back on our hit timer timeout function when this gets called we want to set our modulate back to one 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 all right so i'm just going to test this i have two players in right now and we're going to have this player shoot at this player and you can see on both the clients that this player receives a uh, damage and they flashes white and the bullets get destroyed all right upon testing i i had to fix one thing instead 
of just doing the get tree that unique network ID, we're actually going to just use the integer conversion of our name. Now this will make sure that our players are actually damaged accordingly because that's having some issues just using the unique ID, but using the name does work. So you can just test by running two clients, playing in different usernames, and you can join. You can shoot each other, flash white, take damage. We could start the game if we want. We just shoot like crazy. The reason why the get tree that network ID didn't work is because sometimes bullets would be instanced other other clients. And when we instance a bullet, remember, we instance it under the ID. And sometimes that ID won't be the same because it's being instanced on another client. So we actually have to use that client's name. All right, there's, there's one thing that we want to do towards the start of the game too. We don't want the players to be able to shoot, right? We don't want the players to be able to shoot at the start of the game. You don't want to shoot in the lobby. Meaning we need to change the sprite right here, right? This sprite needs to be changed. The gun sprite to no gun sprite. If you use the same click character I have, you can easily just use the values I use. If you use a different character, just highlight the other character with your box thing. Use these values below on the character with no with no weapon and then use the values that you're currently using right now with a player with a weapon. So this will all make sense once I go back in. Under instance bullet, make a function called update shoot mode. If not shoot mode, meaning that if shoot mode is equal to false, then we're going to set up the region where they are not holding the gun. So sprite.set region rectangle. And these are the values. Rect 2, 0, 1, 1,500, 256, 250. These are the values that I found work for the other texture region. If you go back to texture region, those are the values that cover this player. If you want to use a different one, go select that region and record those values and put those values right in here. If shoot mode is true, meaning we are holding a gun, right? We want the player to update to that sprite. Then we just do sprite.set region rectangle and just use these values, which is the gun holding player. And then we're going to set can shoot equal to shoot mode. Now, can shoot, we actually defined a while ago and we just never used it. <laughs> Technically, yes, we have can shoot and we are, I believe, using it. Yeah, if we click and we can shoot and we're not reloading, so we are using can shoot. So this will update the shoot mode of our player. Now by default, we want shoot mode to be off. So we're gonna make a function. This is gonna be our ready function. And we're just gonna say update shoot mode to false. We don't wanna be able to shoot the start of the game. To make sure that all of our players can shoot when we hit the start button, we're gonna go to our network setup script. So remember this scene right here, this script network setup. And when we switch to the game scene right here, get tree change scene too. We wanna loop through all the children and the persistent nodes. We're gonna check if the child is in the player group and if it is we're going to update their shoot mode to true because remember we're we're clicking on the game the start game right and it's taking us to the game scene so we want to be able to make it so the players can shoot so this just simply goes through all the players and they're like oh yep yeah, that's a player that's a persistent player we want to we want to update their shoot mode and it's true you can hit the run game let's test it and you can see we do not have a gun and we're unable to shoot and once we hit the start game button we don't have guns there's one thing we forgot now we're going to go back in our player and we forgot to define the player group we don't need this group on the hitbox don't put it on the hitbox because the reason reason why we're doing this is because when we loop through on the network script we are looking for a child in the group player and we're updating that shoot mode the hitbox does not have that script it does not have the, the player script so it won't be able to update shoot mode on it but the kinematic body does so you want to make sure that your player kinematic body has the group player added to it now we can restart it and we can run the game and it should work i hit start game Oh, we have guns now and we can shoot. So let's make it so the players can actually die. So just go back to your player script and we're actually gonna go into our, we're gonna go into our process function and we're just gonna check, hey, if HP is less than or equal to zero and we are at the network server, we're gonna call a destroy function. Now, when we call this destroy function, we need to make sure we actually have it in our script. So under the hit by damager, I'm just gonna add, it's another sync function. We're gonna set visible the faults. We're gonna disable our collision shape right here. This collision shape will get disabled so we can't collide with things when we're dead. And we'll disable our hitbox collision shape. So why don't I destroy the player? Well, there's no reason to because players are just going to be re-instanced anyways. And it's just more work to try to re-instance the players and keep the clients on track than it is to just simply disable them. So that's why I'm going with this solution. You can go in and destroy the players completely if you want. So now we can save, we can run, and let's test if we can actually kill each other. I hit start game, I shoot the other guy and he's dead. He's completely gone. I try to go to his previous position. I don't collide with him. He's just invisible. And there you go.